Hi there, I'm Dre, the host and founder of The Dragon Network. Welcome to this week's video. Today I want to talk about something I have a bit of a love-hate relationship with, and that's medical logic modules, or MLMs. I want to provide a brief overview of the markup language that's actually used to write them, and that is Arden Syntax. So we're not going to go into a deep dive technical look at what Arden Syntax is. I'm just going to describe a little bit about how it's structured, including the categories and slots that are present. So if you haven't seen one before, you can actually get an idea of what the code structure would look like. Before I jump in, if you haven't had a chance to subscribe to the channel yet, please go ahead and do that now. And as always throughout the video, if you like the content you're seeing, hit that like button so that I know and I can gauge what to put out there in the future. So before we take a look at the history of Arden syntax, which is that markup language that's used to draft MLMs, let's quickly just touch on what an MLM actually is. A medical logic module is a piece of code or a series of code that is gonna execute against a clinical information system to do all sorts of things. It can generate alerts, it can share messages, it can compile data. So incredibly helpful if you're looking for an EHR, for example, to assist with workflow and there isn't a distinct piece of functionality that already exists in the platform and it supports MLMs. You can have an MLM put in place to actually help you with that workflow. Okay, so let's jump in with a little bit of history about Arden Syntax. Arden Syntax was first developed in 1989 with the first version actually published in 1992. So several years after that, it actually moved from ATSM where it was housed before to HL7, who looks after a lot of our interoperability standards. It is a standard that's approved by ANSI and it is now in version 2.10. So let's take a look at the structure of an Arden Syntax MLM. It is broken down into three different categories and I'll go over what each of the categories are. And within a category, there's a series of slots. The categories actually have to be written in order. So you can't take the categories and sort of move them around. The way that the logic works is the categories are meant to flow in a particular sequence. And then the slots within that, there are some elements that are mandatory and some that are optional. And you can get super creative with what type of logic that you put in there. You can also have situations where MLMs can call other MLMs. So you can have one MLM that calls another one and sort of reaches out. And we'll touch on that as we go through the actual structure. So the first category that we have is the maintenance category. This category is used to support change control and knowledge-based maintenance activities. It is a general description of what the MLM is. The details are meant to be used over time to track version changes, ownership, who's responsible for the medical content and things like that. So within this category, there's quite a few slots that have to contain data, so they are mandatory. And those are the MLM name, it has to have a title, the Arden Syntax version that is being utilized to write it, the MLM version and the institution. So if you've had several different iterations of the MLM, what version it's on, the date of creation and the date of last update, and the MLM's current status. So whether it is a production MLM, whether it's research, whether it's in the testing phase, so you can understand if you need to pull it up and do some troubleshooting right away, sort of what that's gonna look like. So the second category is the library category, and this category contains the medical and clinical content details of the MLM. It's used to describe the purpose and the goals of the MLM, as well as the description of how it's functioning in the application. So if you have particular areas, modules, tables, things that it's gonna be calling that you want to highlight and include in this description, it is very helpful to have this section be as detailed as you can, so that in the future, if someone is troubleshooting and needs to understand sort of what that MLM is doing, or when they're doing regular maintenance on that MLM and doing reviews, they can really dive into and understand where the MLM is intended to function, what its purpose is, and who's responsible for it. There's also slots that are available in this library category for citations and links if the MLM is going to present that information to the end users as part of its functionality. The third section we have is the knowledge category. So this is the meat and potatoes of the MLM. The knowledge category has the data-driven slots that are gonna specify what exactly the MLM is supposed to be doing. So there's several different slots in here and they all are sort of intertwined and have relevance to one another. The data slot is gonna define what variables are gonna be used in the MLM. So what particular tables and what actual pieces of information are going to be leveraged 
used to make that MLM function. That includes how they're mapped to the clinical information system, so where they live in that system. The next one is the priority slot, and it's going to indicate what order the MLMs should be evoked in. The conditions that need to be present for the MLM to be activated live in the evoke slot, and then that's followed by the logic slot, which is the algorithm or the clinical decision support that is supposed to be examined or considered by the system along with the actions that are supposed to be taken when that logic concludes to be true. And finally, we have the level of importance that a true result should have in the urgency slot. So if there's something that's supposed to happen immediately, if there's something that's supposed to happen with a time delay, that's what you would put in the urgency slot. But I mentioned at the beginning that we can use MLMs for all sorts of things. There's some incredibly elaborate MLMs out there, but there's also some really simple ones. So an example of a simple MLM would be if someone places an order for a social work consult, an MLM can trigger and page the social worker. A more complex MLM would be something that is triggered, for example, when someone is transferred into the ICU. It can gather lab result data, medication administration data, information from the clinical record, and put that together and present it on a screen for you know, a one-page summary if something like that isn't already present in the EHR. My love-hate relationship with MLMs really comes down to I love them for the functionality that they can do. They take something that might seem impossible and make it a reality to support your clinical workflows. My hate relationship with MLMs comes down to troubleshooting. So if things are happening in the application and you're not quite sure how it's happening or where it's happening, diving into the logic of an MLM and understanding how it's all linked together can be quite tricky. So it's always a good idea as a clinical analyst to be aware of whether or not the EHR or the clinical information system that you're working on has the ability to support MLMs and where you go to find information on whether or not there is an MLM in place. So I hope that was helpful and it gives you a little bit of an idea of art and syntax and how MLMs work. I will see you again next time.